All right, guys, so I stopped on my way to New Orleans at my favorite gas station in the whole wide world, Bucky's. You have to check this place out if you haven't been there. So, on to New Orleans. Look at the beautiful decoration on that balcony there. I love the style in New Orleans. So, the first place I went to was the World War II Museum. As you can see here, the museum is loaded with different kinds of planes, different kinds of ships, equipment like this German plane here and lots of information you can learn about all the different commanders and generals from the war. The museum was broken up into different sections, like this one here represented the different weaponry that the Americans and the Japanese used against each other in the Pacific Theater. So as you can see here, you have a lot of different kinds of Japanese weapons. And then to the left, you have a lot of American type weapons. The types of weapons that they had on display weren't just small arms. They had some really big guns too, like this 75 millimeter howitzer right here. These kind of big guns were used extensively in the Pacific theater. Next, I checked out the German section, which was pretty spooky. And they had a lot of different cool guns. This is actually a recoilless rifle, not a bazooka like it looks like that is a bazooka right there a type of bazooka that's more german weapons over there on the right and here is a jeep people love to look at the jeeps here there's a lot of different kinds this is actually a gun off of a german aircraft and they even had some old german vehicles <laughs> this is legos in the recreation of d-day if you remember d-day these are legos recreating the battle then they have a Jeep on display with a recoilless rifle up top, huge gun, capable of taking out tanks from the time, and that's a shell that would have gone in it. This is a Jeep that was converted to be able to be driven in the water, so it had a boat top to it. They had a lot of different planes. You can learn all about the different kinds of American planes and British planes. They had French money from back in the day, which was really interesting. They had passports and different kinds of tools people would use. They even had some propaganda posters and letters like these over here for the Italians and the Germans. You could even take a step back and look at what a house would have been like in the 1940s. They had a section for all the Japanese Americans who were rounded up into camps in the United States in the 40s. They had an assembly line for Jeeps to show how they made them very cost efficient back in the day. They had the landing craft that were in D-Day. And they even had some different kinds of vehicles like this medical truck this piece here is very interesting this is actually a listening device that the germans used to spy on americans after the museum i went down to the french quarter and got to check out the cool knickknacks that they had in the gift shops man i love the french quarter it's gorgeous they have it right by the water so you can see all the different ferry boats and you can have a muffaletta which is a great Italian slash Cajun kind of sandwich. And you have to have beignets. Mmm, beignets, so good. Next, I took a stroll through the park right next to St. Louis Cathedral, a beautiful cathedral right in the middle of the French Quarter. If you're there, you have to check it out. And of course, there's brass bands playing right outside. What's a stop to Louisiana without some delicious Tabasco sauce? <laughs> you have to get your Cajun pepper sauce while you're here, and they have a lot of different options for you. You can get the sauce, you can get the clothes, you can get anything with Tabasco sauce there. Well, I hope you all liked my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, guys, have a great day. Thank you.